Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining today. I'm Jessica Drossi again, partner and CEO of Impact Engine. We're proud to host a public facing event in Chicago to educate and inspire Chicagoans about impact investing for the 10th year. For those of you who don't know Impact Engine, we're a public benefit corporation with the mission to engage more investors, entrepreneurs, and advisors in a market where financial returns are linked to positive social impacts. We accomplish this through hosting events and speaking and writing ourselves about the field and what we're learning, as well as managing impact venture capital and private equity strategies for our investors. Those of you who do know us know how passionate we are about this mission and how proud we are to have played a leading role in building the impact investing ecosystem in Chicago over the past 10 years. This year, we've organized our virtual series by type of impact investors, governments, individuals, foundations, and private funds, each of which have their own unique opportunities as well as constraints to manage around as impact investors. Registration is still open for the final session and we would love to see you there. I wanna thank the Chicago Community Trust and MacArthur Foundation for their critical support of the whole series, as well as their ongoing support of the Chicago impact investing ecosystem. And of course, you'll hear from them today on their own work as impact investors. First, you'll hear from Deborah Schwartz, Managing Director of Impact Investments for the MacArthur Foundation, who will share MacArthur's approach, and she will introduce you to Leon Walker, Managing Principal of DL3 Realty, an investee of theirs, who will bring one of their investments to life and tell you about his work here in Chicago. After that, I'll welcome Laura Kernahan, Senior Director of Investments for the Chicago Community Trust, to tell you about the trust's work in impact investing, and she will introduce you to Leah Misbach Day to share more about her experience impact investing through her donor advised fund at the Chicago Community Trust. And then Laura will bring Bob Tucker to the screen from Chicago Community Loan Fund to tell you more about their work, which can be invested in through the trust donor advised funds. Finally, I'll share a quick additional example of a family foundation and how they've approached impact investing. And we'll do our best to leave time for Q&A at the end. Please submit Q&A in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Before we jump in, I thought it would be helpful to review how we think about the terminology in this field, which I know can sometimes be confusing. This is the Impact Investing Showcase, um, but we actually have welcomed all of our speakers to talk about the whole range of tools, um, including these three, as part of how they're aligning their investments with their values. This is how we think about it at Impact Engine. Socially Responsible Investing, or SRI, is screening investments in or out based on whether or not they align with your mission or values. A common recent example is divestment from carbon heavy companies. Environmental social governance investing or ESG is making investments in companies based on their performance on these factors, which are really about how you run a company. Any company and any industry could manage ESG better or worse. It's becoming increasingly acknowledged by mainstream financially motivated investors that ESG should be part of their analysis when they're looking for what's financially material to a company. And finally, impact investing is very intentionally investing from the beginning to create a specific positive social or environmental outcome. This is what Impact Engine does when we require each of our investments to positively improve economic opportunity, environmental sustainability, or health equity. And in terms of going a little bit deeper into impact investing, we think about five ways that you can intentionally create impact. You can invest with one or more of these if you like, and you can use as all of them can be impactful. Impact Engine focuses on the product that the company sells. If you could go to the next slide, please. So that making money and creating impact are exactly aligned. Place is another way to invest with impact where you intentionally focus on creating impact in a certain place. And investing in people is focusing on underserved groups in the way that you invest. For example, gender lens investing. Finally, process and paradigm. Process is like ESG in that any company in any industry can improve its environmental, social, and government governance practices. To make it impact investing, the investor needs to go in with a hypothesis of how their money and their active involvement will be directly impactful. And finally, Paradigm is an example of a company or a fund, let's say, solving an important social or environmental issue, but perhaps in an indirect way, like a company that creates a more accurate carbon measurement system that will allow for better decision making which will allow for reducing carbon in the future. We'll hear about all of these types of investing over the course of today and over the course of this series. With that, I'm honored to welcome Deborah Schwartz, Managing Director of Impact Investments at the MacArthur Foundation. Deborah serves on the executive, executive leadership team of the foundation, which has $6 billion in assets and has dedicated 500 million of that to impact investing, particularly with a focus on catalytic capital. 
Prior to MacArthur, Deborah worked as an investment banker and CFO and was founder of the Mission Investors Exchange, among many other impressive accomplishments. Welcome, Deborah, and thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Jessica. It's wonderful to be here, and thank you to the entire Impact Engine team for all that you're doing to bring all of us together for this series of conversations and uh, throughout the year. Um, I'm excited to be here and to share uh, work drawn from our experience at the MacArthur Foundation, a private charitable foundation headquartered in Chicago, uh, but working globally. Um, the good news is that our assets are actually over $8 billion today, so I need to update that bio on my website, my apologies. Um, but we have been doing impact investing as part of our work alongside our grant making and other activities uh, for nearly 40 years. Um, we are just incredibly uh, heartened by all the engagement and interest in impact investing here in our hometown, Chicago, uh, which is very special to us in so many ways. Um, and I'm very uh, proud to share the webinar stage today with so many fantastic colleagues uh, whom you'll hear from uh, in a bit. So I think with that, I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, and share with you just my plan for some brief remarks before we get to the real uh, star of this part of the show, which is going to be Leon Walker uh, taking us through the work that he leads at DL3 Realty, which is truly inspiring and transformational. Um, I'm going to start by adding a little bit to the definitions that Jessica has laid out uh, and talk about the capital spectrum, the range of approaches to investing for impact and to align with values. I'll tell you a little bit about MacArthur's history in this space and then do a quick flyover uh, with some real life examples from our work here in Chicago. Next slide. So um, this just builds on the really excellent uh, uh, definitions that Jessica shared a moment ago. Um, the main point I want you to take away from this is that the spectrum of capital all the way from conventional investing that really doesn't pay attention to impact all the way out to the other side on the green where everything starts with uh, and goes deep into impact. It's not uh, it, it's something with bright lines. There's a lot of blurriness, there's areas of overlap and convergence, and it's one of the reasons it can be so confusing because people use a lot of these terms and other terms uh, kind of interchangeably and not incorrectly, um, there is no bright line, for example, between responsible investing and sustainable investing uh, in my mind. But in general, I think responsible investing is what we used to call negative screening, getting rid of tobacco and firearms, for example, out of your portfolio. And sustainable investing tends to be more what we think of today as uh, Jessica noted, ESG, environmental, social, and governance, where you're proactively seeking out a clean tech company, for example. The impact investing space itself has some different elements. There are impact investors who lead with a financial objective, but prioritize impact in building their portfolios. And then there are impact investors, and MacArthur has been one of these, again, for almost 40 years, where we start with the impact whether it's the need for affordable housing, the need for economic development, the need for job creation, to advance racial equity, to build a more sustainable uh, economy. Those are impact first strategies, but again, there can be a lot of overlap and sometimes things move and migrate uh, where something is very innovative and untested at the beginning and requires what we call catalytic capital, but then builds scale and evidence and a track record and may migrate into the finance first category or even over further to the left. So that's a, a quick, quick view of what we would call the spectrum of capital. Next slide. In terms of MacArthur's own experience, we have prioritized the impact first side of that chart. And since 1983, the foundation has made over 200 impact investments in Chicago, US, but also globally. These investments total more than 700 million. And while they touch on many different issues and areas and impact goals over the years, everything from affordable housing and community development and financial inclusion, we've done some in the education, some in the health space, many in the climate related arena, um, in, in climate related opportunities. Ultimately, if you kind of pull that whole pool of activity together, there's three big themes, uh, mission driven innovation, 
equity and inclusion and sustainability. Um, I want to also comment at this point before moving further into discussion of the impact investment portfolio uh, that last year in the fall, some of you may have seen that our president, John Palfrey, um, issued a, a public piece, and we've got it on our website, macfound.org, talking about some very, very important activity within our regular investments portfolio. And I should say that the way we are set up, we have the main portfolio led by our CIO Sumansky and a fantastic team of investors. And then we have our impact investments team, uh, which I lead, and we manage a separate carve out that can be up to 500 million in impact investments at any given time. In the main portfolio, we have been making uh, really uh, impressive progress in recent years around some portions of that portfolio where we're working to align our investing with our values and our mission. And so in that piece last fall, which I really encourage you to check out, uh, John Palfrey talks about uh, the effort to both divest from fossil fuels and invest in clean and sustainable technology and energy, and then also to increase the diversity of our fund managers. Um, and I'm really proud of the incredible strides that we are making on both of those important fronts. The information I'm going to share with you today is only about the impact investing portfolio at MacArthur. So that is, it is separate from those two things, which would have been more on the sustainable, responsible part of the spectrum that I showed you. Uh, so these are also um, figures that uh, will be updated soon. But basically, if you look back a year ago, we were at about 400 million in impact investment commitments. Um, I would note that close to half of them are led by uh, people of color, and a third of them are uh, led by women. And I see a good question already coming up on this chat, but I'm going to wait till we get to the Q&A part of the program, because I think that's my instruction. Um, this is just to give you a sense of how things are divided. We had a very large initiative in affordable housing for many years. That is actually, those investments are winding down. If I, when I show you the update, when that comes out, the climate portion of our portfolio, for example, will be substantially larger as we're in an active mode right now in that area. And the other thing that I would flag is Benefit Chicago. And that is an initiative we launched about um, in 2016 in partnership with the Chicago Community Trust, and you'll be hearing from Laura shortly, and Calvert Impact Capital, which is an intermediary that offers a very uh, wonderful security called a community investment note through which donor advised funds and others can invest. Benefit Chicago is a pool of $100 million of capital that is half from MacArthur, from our impact investment portfolio and half uh, from the Chicago Community Trust, its donors and other investors in Chicago and more widely dispersed. Um, and I'm gonna give you some quick examples in a minute of some of the investments that we've made through that combined pool, which I wanna note is managed through a separate legal entity called ARC Chicago. And our general counsel, Josh Mintz is the chair of that board. Both Laura and I serve on the board as do three uh, external uh, trustees. And those folks are Joanna Trotter, Jim Castleberry, and Trinita Lowe. Um, let's go to the next slide. Here's the first example I want to give you from uh, Benefit Chicago. Autonomy Works is a company that received a loan uh, in order to grow its business, employing adults with autism to provide business services like quality assurance, digital marketing, uh, and data management. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I want to mainly draw the point that there are a lot of different ways to uh, make impact investments in all kinds of different impact uh, goals. So let's go to the next slide. This is um, from Green Era, which is a really exciting project. It's going to be an urban, urban farming campus in Auburn Gresham. And the centerpiece is an anaerobic digester. And through the Benefit Chicago Initiative, we were able to buy a participation uh, in a loan that helped uh, advance the development of this project. Next slide. Another loan participation that we bought is helping to support MHUB, which is the technology uh, innovation Manufacturing Innovation Center in Chicago. Again, super, super exciting. And I wanna say that any one of these deal examples 
uh, could be worthy of an entire uh, session. So I really encourage you to check them out and learn more if you're interested or to reach out to me and I'll be happy to share more information. Another example from the portfolio is Friend Health. And you may hear about this in a minute from Leon Walker because he is the developer, DL3 partnered up with this community health center. But this is going to be an exciting new facility in the Woodlawn community, a community health center with other kinds of space. And last but not least, um, an example that is not from our Benefit Chicago portfolio, but from the MacArthur Impact Investment Portfolio dating back to 2009, when we first teamed up uh, with various financial institutions to create the Arts and Culture Working Capital Loan Fund. And this is just to show again, that we can be using impact investments, whether it is clean energy, healthy food, healthy people, uh, creating more jobs, innovative technology, but also the arts. And through this program, we have provided more than $5 million uh, in working capital loans to smaller uh, community-based arts groups throughout the city. IFF manages the program. IFF is a CDFI, Community Development Financial Institution. Bob Tucker, whom you'll hear from, is with another CDFI, very important partner, Chicago Community Loan Fund. So IFF and Fifth Third Bank are providing this. And the last thing I would just say before we hand it off to Leon is that um, the uh, Arts and Culture Working Capital Loan Fund is an example of using a guarantee to support an impact investing activity. Um, we provide a guarantee to IFF. Some of the others have all been loans and loan participations. We also make equity investments and you'll hear later in this series, I believe from a group of um, really exciting impact funds, including Cast Us. And we uh, were very proud to make um, a significant investment in the launch of the Cast Us Fund. So debt, participations, guarantees, equity, we really take a kind of all tools and all hands on deck approach to what we do. So let me hand it off to Leon now. Um, he has been at this uh, incredible work of transformational real estate development more than 20 years. And uh, he has created, if I'm not mistaken, more than 3,000 jobs in the past five years alone with a lot more to come. Uh, he holds dual degrees from the University of Chicago from both Booth and the law school. Uh, he worked at Jones Lang LaSalle before he, he uh, took on uh, the, the work that he's going to talk about today. And we are very, very proud to partner with Leon. All right. Well, thank you so much, Deborah. That was terrific. Um, it's great to see not only the scale of the, uh, the work that you're doing in the impact space, but also just your thought leadership around the creativity of how to use different tools to uh, drive this work. So um, uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you uh, for allowing us to share uh, some ideas about venture development. Um, if we can click to the next slide. Um, you know, I, I'd like to start here because um, this was really the hockey stick moment for our firm. You know, while we had been working in the neighborhoods, you know, doing uh, really tough work around development and challenged communities, historically disinvested areas, uh, you know, a lot of church basements and uh, community meetings, um, this uh, project in Inglewood really sort of uh, captured uh, the attention and the imagination of what could happen when private capital is combined with um, action by the municipality and uh, good charity support as well. Um, and so um, in Inglewood, uh, you go to the next slide please. In Inglewood, we um, uh, developed a uh, Whole Foods, Starbucks, Chipotle um, anchored retail center at the same time that you had um, Spike Lee uh, out there talking about a, um, a movie called Chirac, which I still have not seen to this day. Uh, but there were two very different narratives about you know, where the community is, Inglewood, of course, being one of the more challenged neighborhoods um, in Chicago, but also a history of pride, um, a history of being one of the leading neighborhoods. In fact, the corner that we developed on uh, was the busiest um, uh, corner, uh, not only in Chicago, but the busiest neighborhood sales tax generating corner in the entire country. Um, so it had been laying fallow, um, which means that it could be brought back to productive use. But why we went after the Whole Foods uh, development in the first place was to really address this fundamental um, sort of two city narrative that we've all been uh, hearing about. 
But when you look at life expectancy, that two city narrative becomes, you know, you know, clear in terms of what the impact of this investment means uh, for the South and West sides, 10 to 15 years in life expectancy. Uh, next slide, please. So, you know, all of this is, you know, coalescing with uh, research by the sociologists and public health officials who now say that your zip code is much more important than your genetic code, how you look, your phenotype, um, in terms of determining your economic prospects uh, and the quality of life that you will lead. Uh, next slide, please. You know, so um, additional research by the Voorhees uh, Center at the University of Illinois, Chicago, has really given us this, this map that, you know, many of us are looking at around Chicago. But quite frankly, this map could be uh, looked at in many, you know, urban areas across our country, uh, where we see a smaller and smaller island um, of prosperity being, you know, sort of uh, encircled by a growing sea of poverty. Um, and that poverty is you know, increasingly cut off from opportunities. Um, and when you get this kind of hyper-segmentation and segregation on the basis usually of race and economics, um, it starts a vicious cycle. So the work that we do is to reverse these trends. Um, and so next slide, please. You know, and to uh, really uh, you know, come full head on against the poverty trap that is uh, you know, uh, causing so many of our citizens to um, lose hope about their, their future prospects. Um, and so when you have, you know, hypersegregation, economic disparity, uh, people don't have hope about um, investing in their own future, you know, taking a course at a local community college or, you know, getting a job. And, and that's where we get, you know, the sort of the acting out and the bad behavior that you know, people resort to when they don't see a clear line to fully participating in our economy. Um, and um, it, it's also led uh, to many people throwing up their hands and just saying, you know what, I'm out of here, I'm done. Um, and so we've seen you know, several waves of people leaving you know, these formerly you know, really great uh, dynamic communities. Um, I, I talk all the time about when I was growing up on the South side of Chicago, you know, there were several many downtowns, if you will, uh, whether out on the far south side in Roseland on Michigan Avenue, or whether 87th Street in Chatham, or whether in South Shore, you know, we had all these, you know, sort of, you know, areas of economic activity that, uh, you know, people could walk to, people could, you know, have jobs uh, that really provided a quality of life. And so um, we're focused on how do we bring that back um, so that we can stem the tide but also make neighborhoods much more attractive to working families going forward. You know, so what do we do now? Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, our approach to investing, bringing private equity capital into neighborhoods that brings economic development and opportunity. We call it revitalization, which is, is you know, you know, directly the opposite of gentrification, which is the market working in an unchecked way and uncoordinated and, and not in an intentional fashion, just you know, where development just happens. Um, and that leads to displacement. That leads to you know, the, the, the concerns that many people have about progress. But you know what? We need progress. There is no viable economic model for concentrated poverty other than vulture capitalism. So we are you know, intent on saying that as venture developers, we can revitalize these communities. We can engage existing residents and long-time businesses in the efforts that we have to uh, ch change the neighborhood, in the wealth creation, in the new jobs and opportunities, so that you know we can take advantage of one of our greatest resources in the city of Chicago, which is land that's laying fallow, um, or buildings that are dilapidated, disrepaired, and disinvested. You can turn those things around um, while bringing new resources, new people, and a more dynamic uh, environment. To the, to, the, to the local neighborhood economy without displacing. And you know, for that reason, we consider our work to not be purely mission or purely entrepreneurial, but venture. In that you know, we balance the financial returns, we are a for-profit company. So we have to have you know, profits in order to be sustainable. But we also have, a, we're also mission-driven. 
And it's the combination and it's the perspective that allows us to um, uh, you know, execute uh, transactions a little bit differently. Next slide, please. Um, you know, here's a little insight into how, how we, 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 we go about this work. Um, you know, many times when I'm in a neighborhood, uh, there are, you know, a lot of needs, a lot of desires, a lot of wants. So how do you begin to shape those into something that can be actionable in, in, the, in, the, in the short run? Um, but we also, you know, empower other developers around our anchor investments. Um, and we engage contractors. Uh, we expand with our nonprofit partners and um, doing the important work in the neighborhoods to uh, either do technical assistance or you know, helping with grant making or other activities such that um, everyone participates. And then finally, we wanna make sure we're directing uh, contracts and opportunities. And that's really, really important. Um, for example, uh, I think the next slide may have it. Um, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Is that you know it, you, you look at you know what are the real outcomes from making these important um, high impact investments, and you know you, you create jobs in the box that you build, but that's not where you have you can't stop there. You have to look beyond the four walls of the building and say you know how are we creating a ripple effect in the neighborhood, and so you know here um, with Whole Foods and a great tenant and partner. Uh, we were in, in our nonprofit partner in the community, we were able to surface and get 40 local vendors on the shelves. Uh, not all of them did great, but 20 of them are in 15 or 20 stores regionally, and a half, uh, five or six, half dozen or so are now growing national uh, uh, multi million dollar um, enterprises that are growing locally and hiring locally. And so that's how you create the ripple effect. We also saw longtime residents, you know, see appreciation in their home value. So first time in 50 years, uh, a dramatic drop in crime in the local area. We went with this shopping center, and matter of fact, all of our assets across the South Side have uh, withstood two rounds of social unrest. We didn't file one insurance claim. So there's a way of, you know, making strategic, uh, impactful investments, engaging uh, community such that people take a hold of these assets as theirs. And that's really you know, part of uh, our process. Next slide, please. So you know, for us, the, the, the idea is to scale it, right? Um, scale this strategy and this work so that we can have, you know, tackle that red zone. Um, and you know, part of it is scaling our efforts, but I'm also engaged now um, in, a, uh, in work with the Chicago Community Trust um, and, and others here locally to um, empower, will surface and empower and guide and scale local entrepreneurs so that we have more entrepreneurs, risk takers, developers in the neighborhoods taking on um, these important, this important work. Um, and that's called CIMDI, Chicago Emerging Minority Developer Initiative. I'll talk a bit about that right before I exit. But in terms of how catalytic and how important the ARC Benefit Chicago investment has been, or DL3 Realty, um, you know, I can't say enough about it coming in right at the right time to help us take advantage of some, some opportunities to take risk in areas that others were um, shunning. Um, and so we started with a $5 million uh, investment, co-investment um, with our, our legacy and uh, work and investment in the fund, creating this advisors uh, 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 go forward entity. And that was really to tackle about 50 million or so uh, in new investments. But since then, we now have an active pipeline that we're actually managing with $100 million. And so, um, you know, MacArthur and Benefit Chicago, um, you know, are coming along with us in that. Um, and as a result, you know, we've created 3,000 jobs, uh, some important sort of uh, developments in bringing corporate stakeholders as leaders into the neighborhoods, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield being one, uh, Discover Financial Services. So they're leading corporate stakeholders that are saying, hey, there is a model, work with the navigators and others who can help you invest in these communities in a way that creates jobs, economic opportunity, and most importantly, hope. Um, and we believe this is you know, a model. And here is a quick glimpse of you know, some of the impactful work we're doing on the South Side, planting you know, green zones within the red zone to help reverse these things. Uh, this, 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 you know, sort of disturbing trend that we've been seeing um, across Chicago. Um, and we need to 10X it. 
um, not just ourselves, but to bring others into this. And that's why I'm, you know, out, you know, really enjoy this platform, but so many others where I'm out publicly speaking um, and encouraging others to join us. The SIMD partnership is one Chicago Emerging Minority Developer Initiative, simd.org. I'll put that in the chat. Um, we're also sponsoring um, uh, uh, scholarships at Roosevelt University, uh, Marshall Bennett School of Real Estate uh, to get people who want to you know, transition out of other careers and come back into work in their neighborhood. And I'm making a general call to many of uh, my colleagues, uh, friends and contemporaries who like myself had a great education. Um, you know, University of Chicago Law School Business School, went to City Corp, worked in real estate capital markets and then JLL. But because of life circumstances, I made a change and came back home to bring you know, these uh, ideas, this investment philosophy back to our neighborhoods. The brain drain is real. And part of this is also reversing that so that we get high potential, high capacity entrepreneurs doing work back in our community. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the next step for us um, is we are now, um, you know, uh, moving to larger, um, higher impact um, projects and investments. And uh, this is something that we're working on in the Bronzeville community, but we're also, you know, raising um, additional capital um, so that we can scale our work and do even larger uh, transactions. And our goal, 10,000 new jobs in 10 years, by the end of the decade, actually. So um, we, we thank you for the opportunity to share some of these, these concepts and ideas. I was given a short uh, window here. I tried to get everything through, but I'm happy to answer any questions um, later. But for now, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jessica. Um, and Jessica, you can take us to the next part of the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leon, and thank you, Deborah. Um, I think that really helped bring to life uh, both an impact investing strategy and how a foundation can approach it, but also how that actually flows through, where the money goes, um, and what can be done with it. Next, I'm excited to welcome Laura Kernahan, Senior Director of Investments at the Chicago Community Trust. Previously, Laura managed investments at QBI Financial and at Anne and, and, and Robert Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. She's a lifelong resident of Chicagoland, and I've personally seen her passion for making a difference in Chicago come to life through her work on impact investing at the Trust. Thanks so much for joining us, Laura. Thank you so much, Jessica, for having us on the panel today. We have so long admired the efforts of Impact Engine, and in particular, the showcase ability to bring together impact investors in Chicago. And we're just delighted to contribute to today's discussion. The trust today has three components to our presentation. First, I'm going to share a bit with you about the impact investing effort at our community foundation and why we think it's really important in driving our ability to drive positive change in Chicago. From there, I'll introduce one of our donors to describe how she emphasizes impact in her charitable portfolio at the trust. And finally, we'll share a real life example of a trust impact investment, our loan to the Chicago Community Loan Fund. I'll start today with just a bit of background about the Chicago Community Trust. We are the Chicago Region's Community Foundation. And for over a century, Chicago area residents who believe in our region's potential have found a partner and an ally in us. The Trust is a public charity that supports our geographic region, primarily by facilitating and pooling donations that are used to address community needs and to support our local nonprofits. To enable this giving, our donors have entrusted their philanthropic assets to us, resulting in investment assets of over $4 billion. And these assets are housed in over 100 different portfolios, many of which are customized for individual donors. At the Trust, we firmly believe that as a community, we have the power to put equity and opportunity in reach for every resident of our region. As part of this vision, our strategic mission is to close the racial and ethnic wealth gap which we believe would have a transformative effect on the Chicago region, both for our residents and for our local economy. Our multifaceted strategy underpinning this goal involves advocating for policy and systems change and advancing programs that address economic inequity at the household, neighborhood, and community levels. Our three pillars that underpin this goal specifically are to grow household wealth, catalyze neighborhood development, and to build collective power. The trust has always had its roots in philanthropy and indeed over the course of our organizational history, our primary avenue for driving change in Chicago has been through our grant making. However, 
We recognize that philanthropy alone cannot solve the systemic issues that we are tackling. This critical recognition informs our approach to impact investing, which we believe can meaningfully augment and amplify our philanthropy by activating our investment assets for social good before those assets are distributed back into the community via grants. And we recognize that if we are indeed to close the racial and ethnic wealth gap, it's important for us to utilize every tool at our disposal. It is therefore no understatement to say that mission alignment of our investment assets has become an increasingly important consideration at the trust. And I'd like to tell you all just a bit more about how we are focusing our impact investing efforts and furthermore, how we are connecting our donors to a curated menu of impact investment opportunities. At the trust, the complexity of our portfolio means that we will never come to a one size fits all solution for mission alignment of our assets. While we utilize the full range and spectrum of investment approaches that Jessica and Deborah have both touched upon in their comments, and believe that all of those have value, the trust has prioritized our impact first investments portfolio from a strategic perspective. This effort very squarely built upon the initial success that we've had alongside MacArthur and Deborah and her team and the Calvert organization with Benefit Chicago. When I use the term impact first, what that means for the trust is that we are referring to any investment in our portfolio for which the anticipated impact is our primary reason for selecting that investment. Under the spectrum that Deborah shared with you earlier, these types of investments would fall to the far right of that continuum. And when searching for new investment ideas at the trust, we reorient our typical investment due diligence process by placing impact evaluation front and center at the beginning of that process, but with financial considerations of secondary, but still important consideration. From our perspective, we really wanted to be able to prioritize that impact because that is where we see the most room for the trust to make a difference with our investment capital. And when we are assessing impact, we consider multiple dimensions of a prospective investment. We seek investments that allow dollars to reach a specific population or a geographic region, and we pursue impact themes that align with our strategic mission and with those three pillars I shared earlier. As an example, we can seek investments that enable wealth creation for minority entrepreneurs, which of course is directly tied to closing the racial and ethnic wealth gap. And finally, we also would like to select investments where we believe our dollars are additional or where other investment capital might not go and where thus we believe our investment can be truly transformational and therefore disrupt structural issues with the allocation of capital in our economy. We have already invested in many of these opportunities and continue to build our impact first investment portfolio. We are also very encouraged to see an increasing ecosystem and number of impact investment ideas, including a growing number of impact firms and strategies that are focused right here locally in Chicago. From an asset perspective, and when thinking about where we can really utilize the power of our investment assets in our balance sheet, we have looked often to our donor advised funds to support the growth of our impact first portfolio. For those that are unfamiliar with the term, a donor advised fund is a charitable giving vehicle whereby our donors gift their philanthropic assets to us at the trust, but they retain advisory privileges over the grant making out of that fund. Donor advice funds represent a significant portion of the trust investment asset base. And we believe that donor advice funds are a natural place to pursue impact investing and a meaningful way to compound the social benefits of our donors' generosity, creating a double bottom line for these portfolios. With this in mind, in 2020, we built an impact investing platform for our donor advice funds. This platform is a critical pathway that allows us to invest for impact and importantly, to bring our donors along with us on our impact investing journey. On the platform, our donors use an online portal to review a curated menu of impact investment choices, which currently number nine investment opportunities. And if they so choose, our donors may recommend that the trust invest their donor advice fund for impact across those choices. This customized approach allows the donor to select impact investments based on their personal impact goals or values, as well as the financial objectives that align with their philanthropic strategy. The response to this offering has been broadly very encouraging and we've had over $9 million mobilized for impact across the range of our investment choices. 
And then one of the key benefits that we've seen with having this platform in place has been our ability to introduce to our donors impact investment choices that they may not be able to access elsewhere or within their personal portfolios. And where the intended impact is highly beneficial for the Chicago region and also aligned with the trusted treated mission. So in many ways, having this platform available just feels like a win, win, win for all parties involved. And one type of investment and an example that we're sharing today on the platform is that we have many loans to our local CDFIs. We will share more detail in a few moments, but we're pleased to highlight today the $2 million that the trust has invested with the Chicago Community Loan Fund or CCLF. We can bring up my slide too when you have a moment. When deciding to invest with CCLF, we started with impact. We leveraged the expertise of our community impact team or our grant making team to help us identify organizations that were truly making a difference in Chicago. And this provides a direct example of how we at the trust are translating our philanthropic expertise into the selection of our impact first investments. Additionally, and importantly, CCLF's lending activity is closely aligned with our strategic pillars, specifically our effort to catalyze neighborhood development. CCLF supports neighborhood projects and brings much needed financial capital to disinvested communities alongside providing technical assistance to their borrowers. And this is precisely the type of impact investment that we are pleased to offer on our platform. It has geographically focused impact and alignment with our strategic mission. And it's ultimately one that our donors have found extremely compelling as well. To expand upon that, I'd like to pivot today to sharing a donor's perspective on our impact investment platform. I'm pleased to introduce to you all Leah Miss Bakde, a generous trust donor and an active participant in our impact investing platform. Leah is a documentary photographer and a co-founder of World Bicycle Relief, a 16-year-old global nonprofit and social enterprise organization that mobilizes students seeking an education, caregivers combating disease, and entrepreneurs building their businesses by giving them bicycles and both programs and sales in developing regions. Leah also spends a lot of her time paying attention and actively working in the impact investment space because one of her missions is to reestablish the bottom line beyond profit to be one of value for human capital, the planet, and equitable best practices. Leah, thank you so much for joining the discussion today. You've been such an enthusiastic supporter of our platform, and I'm hoping that you can tell us a little bit about your personal interest in impact investing and particularly why you wanted to pursue that for your donor advice fund. Hey, well, thank you, Laura. It's um, it's an honor to be here amongst all of you. Um, I am passionate about impact investing following or leading my philanthropic efforts. And I because I believe it, it's critical to use our passive resources to do good beyond philanthropy. One of my guiding principles is this is summed up by the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, where he says, Yes, philanthropy is commendable, but it must not cause the philanthropist to overlook the economic injustice that makes philanthropy necessary. So I look to have my investments align with my values and feel that when using my resources philanthropically, you know, I'm not simply chasing, forgive me, but bad or tainted or dirty money after good causes. Um, you know, by bad money, I mean money invested irresponsibly, not sustainably, as Deborah and Leon described, and, um, you know, in products and practices, using profits from high value investments towards philanthropic pursuits creates a more virtual circle where all of my resources are doing good for the world. Um, because, like Laura said, overall, I am interested in reestablishing the bottom line. It's a reestablishing it as a benchmark beyond profit as the holy grail and to be one of value for human capital and equitable practices. Thank you so much. We very much wholeheartedly agree with that approach. Can you tell us a little bit about what your interaction has been with the Trust Impact Investing Platform and in particular, how you approached selecting investments for your own donor advised fund? Mm, yes, with pleasure. Um, yeah, I was thrilled to be given these impact investment options because um, now I had something that aligned with my values and I had choices. Um, so within the CapShift platform, I chose Root Capital, which is an investment growth 
which is a group who invest in um, the growth of agricultural enterprises with farming families, so smaller farmers and globally. So that's something near and dear to my heart. Um, then I chose Calvert, our Calvert Equity Fund. This is a large cap growth fund, and they especially focus on investing in um, business and businesses that profit with the ESG lens that we talked about earlier, the environment, the social responsibility, and the good governance practices. And then, um, as we're going to talk about more today, the Chicago Community Loan Fund, who are doing, you know, it's a local organization, and they're doing brilliant work investing in um, local businesses that Leon really described pretty well earlier. And it being local, it really, you know, moves me to, uh, to be proud to be involved with it. Yes, we too are very proud to be involved with that as well. And I think with that, I will transition over to Bob Tucker from the Chicago Community Loan Fund to share information on how the trust impact investment and also the involvement of donors like Leah has helped to generate positive impact in Chicago. Bob joined the Chicago Community Loan Fund as Chief Operating Officer and Executive Vice President of Programs in 2015. He leads all internal operations and provides strategic leadership to ensure that CCLF fulfills its mission to provide flexible, affordable, and responsible financing and technical assistance for community stabilization and development efforts and initiatives that benefit low to moderate income neighborhoods. Prior to joining CCLF, Bob was the Corporate General Counsel and Chief Risk Officer for Neighborhood Housing Services. And before NHS, he was partner at law firm Chaplin and Cutler LLP. Bob is a graduate of the University of Wisconsin Law School and holds a BA in political science from Emory in Atlanta, Georgia. Bob, can you share a little bit us about the investment that CTC, the investments that CCT's loans have helped enable in Chicago? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Laura, very much. And thanks to Impact Engine for having me here today. Uh, let me tell everyone a little bit about the Chicago Community Loan Fund, a CCLF is a 31-year-old community development financial institution. I know Deborah spoke of CDFIs earlier. Uh, we have a mission to help Chicagoland communities thrive. And CDFIs are a great way to invest and make a big impact. Uh, foundations have known this for a long time. In fact, when we talk about the impact of foundations, uh, CCLF was started in 1991 with an initial $200,000 grant from the Webolt Foundation. Uh, so when I speak at universities about my work, students always ask, what, what was Webolt? And I explained it was a famous department store, and, and then they asked me what a department store is, but um, I wish I was kidding. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to have investors like the Chicago Community Trust. Their investments truly help us catalyze neighborhood investment in Chicago's communities of color. The fact is, foundations like the Trust and MacArthur were doing impact investing before impact investing was even a phrase. Uh, CCLF has a diversity of investors, banks, corporations, foundations, individuals, religious orders. So anywhere from Chase Bank to nuns. Uh, and I have to be honest, when it comes to quarterly reports getting there on time, the nuns are much tougher than Chase Bank. But CCLF is, a highly, rated, uh, is, is highly rated by a third party called ARIS. They review and rate CDFIs, and you can go and seek their ratings of CDFIs. Those ratings uh, go to both our financial condition as well as the impact we have. So at CCLF, we're only a couple dozen people. So investors are investing in a highly efficient and highly impactful organization that's been around for 31 years. And I can't stress this enough. CCLF is an organization that actually looks like the communities we serve. For instance, we have a seven person management team at CCLF and you're looking at the only white guy. We're led by an African-American president, Calvin Holmes. My VP of lending is an African-American male. My VP of portfolio management is an African-American female. My CFO is an African-American female. My head of external relations is a Latino uh, man. So you get the sense that you're stuck with me. Um, we provide capital to pretty much every lending sector to help our long disinvested communities. We do housing, we do community facilities. Uh, we do commercial real estate, social enterprises, and co-ops, and we do every kind of business-to-business -business lending there is, pre-development, construction, bridge, mini-permanent, permanent, you name it. We often think of ourselves as what we call the gap filler. If a hole exists in a developer's financing stack for an important and impactful development in our communities, we're there to fill it. 
So I want to show you a few pictures so you get a real sense of the impact we have. Let's first start with housing. CCLF knows that affordable housing is a key component to keeping Chicago's neighborhoods populated and vibrant. So we have long funded large and small affordable housing initiatives. CCLF administers on behalf of the city of Chicago and provides lending capital to a program called Chicago Neighborhood Rebuild. Rebuild targets investments to acquire and rehab vacant and abandoned homes on the south and west sides of Chicago, working with small neighborhood developers to improve their communities. We also partner with workforce development organizations in Chicago to help train at-risk youth in the building trades. This is one of the city's signature family, uh, single family programs. Community facilities. Excess Tennis is an excellent example of the unique community facilities that CCLF finances throughout Chicagoland. It's located in Washington Park, specifically 53rd and State, and includes two dozen indoor and outdoor tennis courts, 150 meter track in seven classrooms. It's incredible, you should visit it, you can. Just give them a call. It's the second tennis facility in the country to be founded and operated by an African-American, Kamal Murray. You might recognize the name. Among other things, Kamal is known for coaching Sloan Stevens to the US Open title in 2017. He's a great tennis player, he's a great tennis coach, and he's quite the visionary in the community. Access is all about introducing underserved youth to tennis, while at the same time hosting programming and providing tutoring at the facility, impacting 3,000 students annually. CCLF provided a construction loan in the case of Excess Tennis. Social enterprises. Ignite Technology is a very exciting social enterprise. CCLF was funded, has funded social enterprises since our inception. It's actually in our organizational DNA, if you will. Ignite is dedicated to creating a community of entrepreneurs who share their experiences and help build equitable wealth through programs and space. It operates two co-working spaces, the Blue Lacuna in Pilsen and the CCLF funded Momentum Coffee and Co-working in the South Loop, 2119 South State if you want to visit. And most recently, Ignite expanded with a coffee shop in Millennium Park. Visit it when you're visiting the Bee. It's a gorgeous space and they're doing so much good with their work. And finally, commercial real estate. CCLF believes that the communities that we serve deserve the same amenities and related quality jobs that so many of us simply take for granted. Commercial and retail development is crucial to, the, to, to this. Now look at this guy. Yes, that's Leon Walker. He has lots of, lots of claims to fame and CCLF customer is just one of them. We're proud to work with Leon and, and you can get a sense of that from what he told you earlier. Um, I, he talked a little bit about Englewood Square. I just want to highlight a couple of things. CCLF provided a pre-development loan to Leon's company, DL3 Realty, for Englewood Square to get that thing launched in the first place. As he noted, the corner of 63rd and Halstead, which used to be one of the busiest intersections in all of Chicago, sat vacant for decades until the development of Englewood Square. This development brought a healthy food grocery store and Whole Foods, a Starbucks, which, by the way, is one of the nicest Starbucks in the entire city, a Chipotle and other re retail stores to the South Side Englewood neighborhood. 250 new jobs are created and the community finally has access to fresh and healthy food. So this is a very simple, quick snapshot of what CCLF does every day. And again, I can't stress enough how we can't do it with dedicate, without dedicated partners like the Chicago Community Trust. So thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, Jessica, I think I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thanks so much, Bob, really appreciate it. Um, and appreciate you making jokes, even though there's no audience. That's very hard to do. And I, I just want you to know that I laughed. Um, hopefully everybody else was paying attention too. Um, so, so thanks, Bob. Thanks, Laura and Leah for sharing the work of the trust and the work of, of your own investments, Leah. Um, again, hopefully this was another great example of seeing how you kind of go from who controls the investment dollars, what their strategy is, and that actually if you do it right, it does trickle down into actual impact on the ground. Um, and you saw a lot of different examples today that hopefully um, inspire you or you know, pique your interest to follow up on. Um, there's so much opportunity to invest in impact. Um, there's examples in Chicago, but also everywhere. Um, obviously, this is the Chicago showcase for that. We, that's what we focused on. But um, really look around wherever you are. Um, you'll see these types of opportunities. Um, so before we move on, we, we saw an example today of a big private foundation. We saw an example of a big public foundation. I wanted to just share one more quick example and a little bit less depth, but of a smaller family foundation, which perhaps some of the people in the audience might uh, be affiliated with or, or be attached to and want to learn from. 
Um, this is a family foundation I am a trustee of, much smaller than MacArthur or CCT, where they've been working over several years to move 100% of the endowment to align with the mission as much as possible and also made a number of PRIs. Um, so I'm not gonna read through these or go into depth. We don't have time anyway, but just to give you a broader sense of another example, not a carve out um, and an approach that cuts across both you know, market rate um, in the endowment and also impact first or PRIs alongside grants. Um, in this case, there have been no sacrifices to date on the financial return on the endowment side um, and on the grant uh, or PRI side, uh, which are impact first, some are you know, high risk, potentially high return, um, but impact first, and some are specifically lower return, uh, for example, like a lower interest rate. Um, I just wanna, wanna end here by saying, you know, the key is to ask questions. Um, where, wherever you are, if you're an individual foundation, you're not gonna have all the answers, maybe you don't quite know where to start, um, but many times you are working with someone else, some kind of intermediary, a, a foundation advisor, um, a financial advisor, maybe a donor advice fund, fiduciary, ask questions, ask what can I do with this money that's sitting here? I think, um, you know, this is true, I believe for, for all money that we might have um, control over, but particularly charitable dollars, in my opinion, um, while they are waiting to be deployed as grants, um, could be impactful and at very least, make sure they're not working against your mission. Um, so speaking of questions, unfortunately, we went a little bit over time with our speakers today. Um, so we're not gonna have time for q and I did write down all the questions that came through. So thank you for those who submitted those and we will do our best to either address them in a future event and or in the write-up of this event. You can find a write-up of this event and the slides and a recording alongside all the other events in the sessions um, over this month, which we'll post at the end of the month on our website and we'll also share in our newsletter. Um, so if you haven't, haven't signed up for the Impact Engine newsletter, you can do that and be notified of when they're gonna be available. Um, and I just want to thank you again for taking the time to be here today. Hopefully you learned something interesting, got inspired, have some ideas on how to act on impact investing with your charitable dollars. Um, as a reminder, we have one more session left in the series. It's coming up next Tuesday, same time. Um, this is private funds. So really private funds um, define their own opportunities constraints and then raise money from governments, foundations, individuals, and others to accomplish those goals. So we'll hear from Impact Engine as well as Cask Us, um, which I believe Depper referred to earlier in the session today, as well as some underlying investees. Uh, and that'll be the end of the Chicago Impact Investing Ecosystem um, series. So thanks so much for those of you who have joined us along the way. And I'm gonna leave you with a uh, survey. If someone could pull up the survey slide, if you have a minute, we'd love your feedback. Always trying to improve um, and get better along the way. Have a great afternoon.